Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another video of the F122 Drive Remote with Red Bull, episode number 52 today for the Japanese Grand Prix of season 3, round number 14. If you missed the previous episode uploaded last week at Singapore, I recommend you go and check that out. Especially the fact that somehow a miracle happened, we managed to grow our lead four more points to Leclerc starting from the back. So, coming into this one, then we're looking at couple more R&D upgrades. Now it's a toss up between downforce and brakes. Um, and I'd say, you know, they're only it's only a minor one. We haven't got that major one. We probably can't get the one on before the end of the season. So we're gonna go da front rear downforce in the hope that we can also have enough resource points to uh, purchase the front downforce one. Because uh, we do need to catch up a bit to Alpine on aero side of things. Hey. I need your attention. The tech regulations are changing. There's a risk some of our hard work will be undone, so we need to mitigate it. As soon as you can, I want you to look at the developments we have and tell us what areas you want to invest in protecting. So, uh, for the second time in this career mode, um, we are going to have an engine, uh, engine and durability department change. Uh, still waiting for the sashi and the aero side of the departments to be reset. Uh, but coming into this one then, f slight upgrade for Ferrari puts them back in front of ourselves. Slight upgrade for Mercedes. Nothing else uh, for anyone else has been flat lines for the bottom half of the grid since for, since Baku, basically. Um, well, so we'll move to qualifying then for uh, Suzuka. Obviously, Suzuka never used to be a good track, but it's slightly better than this year. Definitely a better track for me than Singapore was. So we're hoping for a good qualifying and it's looking good so far. P11 from the medium compound remember. So obviously that will improve as we do this sole run on the soft compound tire uh, as we go through then into the final corner. Taking a bit too much curb there. Uh, excuse me, not the final corner, the first corner. Um, which did harm ourselves a bit but then you know the offset between the medium and the soft compound tire we go through sector one which is you know this is the area where we're going to gain the most i feel from the medium compound tire with a lot of list of attraction there um we'll also gain stuff through sector uh, sector two as well um, as we go up to this hairpin um, which is always now can, you can never get the um, apex there took too much curbing there we did manage to gain time and took the curb from the exit which then lost me time thank you very much so we go uh, down towards Spoon, uh, which is a, not the best. It's still a very understeery corner on the F122. Uh, I don't know why it is, but there we go. Um, we have gained time. There were five and a half tenth improvement. Uh, let's see what it's time against Magnussen, and it's half a tenth up. So this is going to be somewhere inside the top ten, surely. For half a tenth up on Magnussen, final sector. Then through these final couple of corners. Uh, try not to take too much curbing because it can damage your time so we come up to the final corner and across the line and I think that is in, definitely inside the top 10 P7 uh, which is not bad uh, it's something we can work with we can definitely get a good result out of that especially the fact Carlos Sainz has a penalty now I th I'm going to cut to something what I think caused this it was a illegal blocking so I'm trying to get back to the pits on fuel um, and then I'm offline, I have to brake and then science blocks off a Mercedes and also a Haas there so yeah we'll be 6th place on the grid at least depending if there's not any more changes, time for the race. We come to you today live from the Mai Prefecture in the south of Japan's Honshu Island for a race that has seen so many title deciders through the years some simple, some controversial, but all contributing to a legacy that makes the Japanese Grand Prix an indispensable stop in any Formula One season. 18 corners make up a lap of the incredible figure of eight Suzuka circuit with 10 to the right and 8 to the left for a distance of 3.6 miles. Average lap speeds around here are fairly quick and if it stays dry, expect it somewhere in the region of 136 miles per hour. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lando Norris put in a fantastic lap yesterday. 
and he will start from pole position, edging out Max Verstappen, who will start from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Leclerc, Russell, Daniel Ricciardo, Phoenix, Hamilton, Vettel, Gasly, and Carlos Sainz. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Magnussen, Albon, Valtteri Bottas, and Joe, Schwartzman, Sonoda, Mick Schumacher, and Nicholas Latifi. Stroll and Esteban Ocon lines up at the back of the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you here with us today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. So here we are down in P6 then. Nobody else in front of us taking a grid penalty, so it will be the inside line for Turn 1, which is not exactly the ideal line that you want around Suzuka, but nevertheless, we'll try and make it worse and try and gain some positions off the start. Race strategy is one stop. Did look at medium to soft, because we did do soft to medium, sorry, uh, excuse me, medium to soft in the race in Season 2 for Avatari, but we're going to not go gonna do that in season three because while well, one it's medium soft and medium is faster and two nobody else is actually doing it so let's move then to five red lights for the japanese grand prix at suzuka and away we go and it's a miserable start ricardo's had a good start so has hamilton so as i think has science he's going to get bought top we're going to go down on the inside of hamilton who leaves the door open on the inside for me to just walk through basically a little bit of understeer there um, as well as vettel gets in front as well follows me through on lewis hamilton now we look forwards can we get make a dive at the hairpin on george russell yes we can not on the inside a little bit of a dive on there but um, we did need to make that move because russell will be slow in sector three um, as well but did Russell give us the, how much Russell space did Russell give here we'll have a look at this replay he did not want to give me any space whatsoever it sort of half turned into the corner slightly when we made the dive so watching uh, Lando Norris versus Max Verstappen and Max Verstappen is the one who leads this race Verstappen Norris excuse me is trying to get past but um, Verstappen able to hang on for now but it looks like they're not moving away so it looks like there might be an issue for Verstappen. He's holding everyone up. Uh, Deja Vu on lap two. Where we try and get down the inside of Danny Ricciardo. But Ricciardo puts up a fight. We're going to go side by side all the way down to Spoon. And then Ricciardo gives the, uh, yields the position. Next up, lap three. Verstappen and Norris are still ahead. But we can get involved with them. If we can get past our teammate, Charles Leclerc. Down Danny inside. And we're up to P3. We're flying. Set the fast lap of the Grand Prix as well. So... It's only a matter of time before we move on the back to um, Verstappen and Norris. But, first of all, Leclerc didn't want to give me any space at all. He, of course, we're in a championship fight with him. And, of course, the two drivers in front of us are still technically within a chance of championship fight. Speaking of uh, Norris, he's going to have another go with DRS. Around the outside of Turn 1, unable to get, make the move. And has to stick behind yet again. And I presume that... Verstappen's got some sort of damage, which is why he's driving so slowly. Um, because we can just move, cruise out to the back of Norris and do a similar move. He tries to squeeze us, but we're having absolutely none of it on Norris. And down the inside we go. And up to P2. Next up will be Verstappen. Excuse me. Um, and Deja Vu. Uh, doesn't want to give us the space. We gave him space on the inside of the curb, but he takes too much of the curbing, which affects his traction out of the final corner. And that is, uh, he did, as I say, he didn't want, just did not want to give us any space whatsoever. There, a little bit of grass taken by myself to make the move done, but we have made the move done, and that's going to leave uh, Lando Norris. He's been caught a bit sleepy, and that is Charles Leclerc down the inside of. Norris, they're still going side by side through 
the opening part of this track and Leclerc on the outside will turn to the inside for the next S and takes the P3 away from Norris. Back to our POV, then on lap number 6 and it's time for our pit stop uh, onto a set of mediums. Verstappen's going to copy follow me as is Ricardo. Leclerc and Norris will continue on for another lap. Uh, 2.4 seconds stop, a little bit held though for Vettel coming in the pits which is annoying but nevertheless um, hopefully we can put the lap in now to stay ahead of the likes of Leclerc and Norris. Verstappen has had by the way in the background has had a, an atrocious stop, got held up by both Ricardo and Vettel and he is now behind them so that's bad news for Verstappen he might be out of this championship fight now and it might just be well you know he's already behind Norris uh, but Norris, of course, comes out there. You can see it's actually, uh, at this moment in time, a Red Bull 1-2 and a McLaren a 3-4. and four. So, Ricardo did get that podium last time I had Singapore. But, as we cut to, the, obviously we've cut to the final lap. Leclerc, and even though Norris set fastest lap, he had a bit of a slower stop on when he doing that overcut. It was able to cruise up to the back of us, but unable to do anything so it's a Red Bull 1-2 and a McLaren 3-4 so already it's good news for the for the constructors and it's better news for the drivers as well because we have beaten McClure for the second race in a row now as we close in on our maiden championship not just victory today then but the championship as well what a spectacular season they've had and congratulations to the whole team So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. we've wrapped up the Constructors' Championship, which is good news, because it means it's now just a straight fight to myself and Leclerc. The team don't need to get involved. We've worked together now to get that championship, and now it's a straight fight to myself and Leclerc. And then, obviously, if Verstappen and Norris can get their act together, if we have a poor race. The two remaining races, Mexico and Brazil. So... Yes, uh, the stuff Norris to set fastest lap, only a tenth fast than mine. Uh, so, to be honest, you know, he did take pole, but obviously got overtaken by Verstappen, who had. I, I'm convinced Verstappen had some sort of damage. You know, this is Max Verstappen we're talking about. That pace doesn't go away all over, overnight. Does mean that Norris is now in front of Verstappen, and Verstappen is pretty much out of it. As is Norris, really. So it's it's really looking like a two-horse race with two races to go between myself and Charles Leclerc. Leclerc really needs to win the race, though, in Mexico. So we can wrap up and do something that I've never done on this channel before and wrap up a world championship with a race to spare. That would be one, one hell of achievement. Constructors, I mean, we've an annihilated the competition. McLaren way behind. Alpine will be disappointed with the way it's finished. Uh, Ferrari in front of Mercedes as well. Then Alfa Tari uh, trying to finish strong, although they have had a bit of a rocky period with no uh, series of upgrades. In terms of the rivalry, uh, we're now in lead Hamilton 11 8. He didn't have a great race today, which is unfortunate for Sir Lewis. Um, there, um, we do gain a good health in a driver acclaim as well. As well, we also have a marketing department uh, appear to an advert to or focus on work. Now, we've got enough driver acclaim. Uh, so I think we want the resource points to see if we can sneak that front that, that Remember that front downforce upgrade I was talking about? We could do that with that extra 400 resource points to purchase on that. So that's what I chose to do. Uh, we'll gl probably claim, claim back the driver claim that we're missing out on uh, at the next um, event. We've already got 3,000 R&D points, so we should be able to purchase that front downforce upgrade in the next episode at Mexico. 
So yes, if you have enjoyed this video, then leave a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, see plenty more F122 drive crimmer videos as when they come out. Until the next video then, I'll see you next time. Take care, thanks so much for watching, enjoy your day, and goodbye. <laughs>